Magandang araw po sa inyo lahat. Muli uh, tayo mag-aaral ng ating advanced uh, Bible study. Uh, tutuloy natin yung ating pag-aaral sa paksa ng translation. So, last week, marami na din tayong natalakay. Iguna na dito yung uh, kung paano na isalin yung ating Bible from the original language up to English. And then, meron din tayong tinalakay about uh, uh, textual criticism. So, naalala natin yon So, pagkukumpara ng mga available na, na manuscripts. So, may mga manuscript tayo. So, so, sa New Testament, alam nyo ba na may around 5,000 available manuscripts ang ating New Testament. So, yung mga scribes kasi, ang ginagawa nila para may preserve yung yung written word is isinusulat nila kada letra wala pong printing press noon so ang ginagawa nila sinusulat nila matiyaga nilang sinusulat yung bawat salita bawat uh, uh, talata and then from there isasali na naman ulit isusulat na naman ulit isusulat na naman ulit para ma-preserve yung tradition ng ng Bible So, right now, we, we have around 5,000 manuscripts. So, dun sa 5,000 manuscript na yun, kukumpara-kumpara nila yon ng mga textual critics. And then, they will come up the best possible version nung, nung of the original. No? So, yun yung kanilang uh, pakay. Kumbaga, yung goal nila, mahanap nila yung best possible in the new nearest possible uh, To the, the nearest to the original yung version na pinakamalapit sa, sa, sa original text so sa hapon na ito or sa araw na ito patuloy tayong mag-aaral ng ating uh, paksa about translation and panalangin muna tayo bago tayo magsimula Panginoon, nagpapasalamat po kami muli sa oras na ito na ipinagkalob niyo po sa amin at gabayan niyo po kami Panginoon tulungan niyo po kami o Diyos na maintindihan namin yung aming pinag-aaralan patungkol sa translation ng ng Biblia Panginoon o God. At ano pa ba Panginoon o God yung dapat naming uh, piliin na pinaka the best na translation Lord lalo na pag kami ay nag prepare ng aming mga sermon. Ang muna ka Panginoon sa amin sa hapon na ito pinupuri ka namin sinasamba ka namin sa pangalan ni Jesus. Amen. Amen. So, sige, tuloy na tayo dun sa ating pag-aaral about uh, translation. Sabi dito, since language uh, differ in many ways, making a translation is not a simple, cut and dried mechani mechanical process. When it comes to translation, it is wrong to assume that literal automatically equals Accurate. Again, when it's literal, it doesn't mean automatically it is accurate. So, when you say literal translation, word-for-word -word translation, minsan tayo sa English, pag nag-translate tayo sa Tagalog, or balik na natin, from Tagalog, kasi isip natin nasa Tagalog, di ba? So, pag nag, nag gusto natin magsalita ng English, we, we try to, to translate it literally. Na, na, na ano nyo yun, na subukan nyo yun, di ba? Na, nangyayari sa inyo yun. Sa isip nyo, tinatranslate nyo literally, word for word. Pero yung lumalabas, hindi, parang, parang hindi awkward or mali or hindi, parang hindi tama yung thought pag, pag nagtatranslate tayo ng word for word. Though, so that's, that's the same thing. So sa Greek and the Hebrew, hindi ibig sabihin na literal translation, na word for word translation, tama na yung Uh, or accurate na yung translation mo, hindi po, hindi po, no? So, we're not gonna study Greek here, pero pag, pag nag-aral kayo ng Greek tsaka Hebrew, hindi, hindi, hindi ibig sabihin na pag literal, it's, ac it's accurate. So, a more literal translation is not necessarily a more accurate translation. It could actually be a less accurate translation. So, sometimes literal translation are less accurate translation 
is the translation and 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 was healed the boy from that from the hour that na na gets niyo ito yung translation na literal and was healed the boy from the hour that is it better than and the boy was cured at once new american standard bible or and the boy was healed from that moment new english translation of the bible kasi yung greek iba iba rin yung structure ng sentences nila so pag ginawa nating literal translation magiging ganoon parang parang uh, wooden ang tawag nila wooden translation and the boy was cu- uh, eh, was and was healed the boy from the hour that Translation is more than just finding matching words and adding them up or adding them up. Translation entails reproducing the meaning of a text that is in one language, the source language, as as fully as possible in another language, the receptor language. Again, Translation entails reproducing the meaning of a text that is in one language, let's say Koine Greek or Hebrew, the source language, as fully as possible in another language. The form of the original language is important, and translators should stay with with it when possible. But form should not have priority over meaning okay so form when it comes to translation form should not be the priority or should not have the priority over the meaning ang importante pa rin sa translation is yung pag translate mo is maiintindihan ng readers yung meaning ng text what is most important is that contemporary reader understand the meaning of the original text that's what I uh, that's what I I said earlier when a translator can reproduce meaning while preserving form all the better so if you can reproduce the meaning while preserving the form then it's all the better translating is complicated work and translators often must make difficult choices between two equally good but different ways of saying something like sa Tagalog meron tayong mga iba't ibang way of saying something it's one one meaning yes is yung 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 statement is, i mean yung yung thought is one meaning yung thought is one pero yung the way we we express it in words minsan nagkakaiba di ba this explains why there are different approaches to translation Individuals and committees have differences of opinion about the best way to make the tough choices involved in translation, including the relationship between the form and the meaning. Is it the form or is it the meaning? There are two main approaches to translation. Two main approaches to translation. Number one is the formal approach. Sometimes labeled as the literal or the word-for-word approach. Again, it's the formal approach or the literal or the word-for-word approach. And then the next one is the number two is the functional approach, often called idiomatic or thought for thought. So the lower po yan, eh? formal and then functional. Of the, the functional again is often idiomatic or thought for thought in, rela- in reality no translation is entirely formal or entirely functional since source and receptor languages differ we have Koine Greek and then you have the English language so no translation is entirely formal or entirely functional all translation will have at least one some formal features and some functional features so
So this situation is more like a scale, ranging from translation that are more full, formal to translations that are more functional. So para siyang scale from merong, merong mga translation na nasa end ng scale, nasa pinaka-end ng scale, the, we call it the, the, the formal translations. And on the other end of scale, there is there are functional translation. So last time, tinanong ko kayo sa assignment uh, to 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 give your feedback about different translations. Ngayon may intindihan natin, no? Saan ba galing tong translation na ginagamit natin pag nagpipitch tayo? Yung leading translation, nasan siya sa scale? Is it more formal or is it more functional? How about yung, yung ESV, English Standard Version? Pastor, gamit ko ESV. Nasa more formal ba siya or nasa more functional approach? The more formal approach tries to stay as close as possible to the structure and words of the source language. Again, the more formal approach tries to stay as close as possible. Pinaka malapit, no? Na na pinaka posibling malapit, no? Pinaka malapit na to the structure and words of the source language. Translation or translators using this approach feel a keen responsibility to reproduce the forms of the original Greek and Hebrew whenever possible. Okay, tatanungin nyo ako, ano yung mga examples dito ng mga translation which, is, which are fo more formal. We have the NASB, New American Standard Bible, HCSB, Pullman, uh, and then uh, ESV. So, may tatlo tayo. NASB, HCSB, Holman Contemporary Standard Bible, I think. And then ESV, English Standard Version. So, yung ESV pala na ginagamit natin ngayon is more, nasa scale siya ng formal. No? On the downside, the formal approach is less sensitive to the receptor language. Again, it's less sensitive. Kasi nga, ang kanyang, ang kanyang uh, goal is to stay as close as possible to the structure and words of the source lang language. So, it is less sensitive to the receptor language of the contemporary reader. And as a, as a result, may it may appear the the structure or the the sentence construction may appear stilted or awkward ang tawag dito sa namin sa seminary noon is wooden translation formal translation run the risk of sacrificing meaning for the sake of maintaining form again formal translation run the risk of sacrificing meaning for the sake of maintaining form. The more functional approach tries to express the meaning of the original text in today's language. And then on the other end of the scale. So the more functional approach, again, the more functional approach tries to express the meaning of the original text in today's language. So ang, ang concern nila, maintindihan natin sa ating uh, original language yung Bible. Here, the translator, the, the, the translator feels a, a responsibility to reproduce the meaning of the original text in English so that the effect on today's reader is equivalent to the effect on the ancient reader. Translator feels the responsibility to reproduce the meaning of the original text in English so that the effect on today's reader is equivalent to the effect on the ancient reader. Many contemporary translations utilize this approach, including New Living Translation and the Good News Bible. Narinig niyo na ba yung Good News Bible? Ginagamit yata yun sa Catholic Church. So, New Living Translation and the Good News Bible are more functional 
or more contemporary friendly na translation because their concern is that we will uh, understand the meaning of the original text that is equivalent to the effect on the ancient reader. The functional approach is not always sensitive as it should be to the wording and structure of the source language. Ito naman yung problema niya. Yung functional approach, it is not always sensitive as it should be to the wording and structure of the source language. So when it moves too far away from the form of the source language, the functional approach runs the risk of distorting the true meaning of the text. What is the weakness again of, of functional approach? When it moves far away from the, the form and source language, the functional approach runs the risk of distorting the true meaning of the text. Minsan napapalayo na sila doon sa nais sabihin ng text na yon, yung ipinapahiwatig, ibig kahulugan ng text na yon, masyado nang napalayo yung functional translation. The spectrum of translation might look something like this. Moving from the more formal to the more functional. Tingnan natin tong diagram na to. So the spectrum of the translation might look something like on the screen right now. Moving from a mo the more formal to the more functional. So nakikita nyo dyan. Diba? We have the more formal King James American Standard Version. And then NASV, NAKJV, ESV, RSV, HTSV, NRSV, NET. And then moving more towards more functional, you see New Living Translation, mga ginagamit natin. Good News Bible, and then the Message Bible. In addition to the two main approaches to translation, which is the functional or formal and then the functional, you will encounter what is known as the paraphrase. Meron mga Bible, they are called the paras paraphrase Bible. Technically, a paraphrase is not a translation from the original language at all, but mere merely a, a, a restatement or explanation of the particular English translation us using different English words. Sino sa inyo ang gumagamit ng The Living Bible? Ano ko meron gumagamit dito? Narinig ko lang Living Translation. I don't know how how different it is from from uh, Living Translation, the NLB. Because the NLB, the Living Bible, perhaps the most famous paraphrase is Kenneth Taylor's restatement of our American Standard Version for the benefit of his children. So, may, so ito pa lang living Bible na, na minsan ay ginagamit ng mga pastor. No? It's, it's a translation from Kenneth Taylor for the benefit of his children para sa mga bata, sa mga anak niya. Tinranslate niya ng mas mababaw. Another, another well-known paraphrase, the Amplified Bible. Uh, I remember last time uh, pina, pinabasa ko kayo ng Amplified Bible and I think may nag-comment na maganda pala yung Amplified Bible let's see what's, what's, what's this Amplified Bible another well-known paraphrase the Amplified Bible tries to give the reader an understanding of the many meanings contained in a particular verse through the creative use of amplification ina-amplify niya yung isang verse giving uh try, trying to give the reader an understanding of the many meanings contained in a particular verse for instance John 11:25 reads Jesus said to her I am the resurrection and the life whoever believes in me although he may die yet 
he shall live. But may, may pansin nyo, mayroong mga naka parenthesis. Diba? This looks very much like the overlord overload fallacy which assumes that a word will bring its full range of meaning into every context. The Amplified Bible leaves the misleading impression that the reader is free to choose from among the options presented. Ito yung mahirap dito. Minsan sa translation, nami-mislead yung reader kasi siya na yung pipili kung anong ibig sabihin ng text na yon, yung interpretation ng text na yun. Kasi bibigyan ng Amplified Bible yung lahat ng mga possible na meaning eh. So, yung reader, he's free to choose, ah, ito siguro yung interpretation na to. Which is wrong, kasi nga, hindi mo pinag-aralan mabuti, ano ba yung interpretation ito based doon sa, sa step or, or sa process ng interpretation. So, marami mga pastor na gumagamit ng Amplified Bible, which is randomly choose ano yung, ano, yung trans, ano yung tamang interpretation nun based on the translation of Amplified Bible, which is very dangerous and misleading. Again, paraphrases are not translations from the, the, the original language. We do not recommend using paraphrases for serious study because they tend to explain rather than translate. Pinagamit ko kayo ng Amplified last time para magkaroon lang kayo ng feel ng about about different types of translation. So those are paraphrase, hindi natin tuyo, hindi dapat din dapat tuyo ginagamit. Pag tayo ay nag-aaral para sa preaching. Ito, isang tabi muna natin yon yung Amplified Bible natin or yung Living Bible natin. Itabi muna natin yon dahil mas importante Meron tayong mga titingnan mamaya later on kung ano yung mga magagana, ma, ma, bu, maayos na mga uh, translation na pwede natin gamitin. So, we do not recommend using paraphrases for serious study because they tend to explain rather than translate. We believe that the author's meaning is encoded in the details of the text. The author's meaning is encoded in the details of the text. In a paraphrase, the translator makes far too many of the interpretive decision for you. Sila na yung decide ng interpretive, interpretation ng, ng Bible, ng interpretation ng verse. Sila na yung decide para sa'yo, which is wrong. Kailangan ikaw ang mag-decide based on your study, own study of the text. The result is that paraphrases add many things that are simply not in the Bible. Rather than translating the Word of God, paraphrases present a commentary on the Word of God. Of God. Wala na silang pinagkaiba dun sa mga Bible commentaries. Hindi na kailangan mong mag-aral. Hindi mo na kailangan tignan yung mga Bible ng mga background. Because pag gumamit ka ng paraphrase, ando dun na. Pero ang problema dun, hindi mo alam kung tama yung pag-interpret nila doon sa verse na yun. You should treat paraphrases like commentaries and use them as such. Use them as commentaries. Our advice for those who are addicted to the Living Bible and other paraphrases is to switch to New Living Translation. So, the New Living Bible, kung magamit kayo nun, ang recommendation dito is that you switch to the New Living Translation NLT. I think some of you are using this, which is okay. Pwede nyo gamitin yung NLT. So, it has a more functional approach. So, uh, these are the sample translation from across the spectrum using 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. So, as you read the different translations, you will notice the subtle shift from an emphasis on form to an emphasis on function. King James Version There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with the temptation also makes a way to escape. 
that you or ye may be able to bear it. So 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 13 napaka wooden ng translation ng King James version. Ayta niyo yon napaka formal. Word for word translation. Now New King James version nagkaroon sila ng update. So they have New King James version. Let's read New King James version. No temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with the temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. Ang laki ng improvement. Nakita niya yung improvement niya. Although nandudun pa rin yung woodenness, word for word, pinipreserve yung form ng translation, but you're able to, because of the update, because of the improvements, mas naiintindihan natin siya. ESV, marami sa ating gamagamit. Ako, ginagamit ng ESV. English Standard Version. No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful and He will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, He will also provide the way of escape that you may be able to endure it. So it's still uh, formal, pero uh, mas 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 nagagras mo siya yung yung thought niya. So etong susunod, which is Holman Contemporaries, uh, Holman Contemporary uh, Bible. Uh, this is more recent na translation. So it says here, No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to humanity. God is faithful and He will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with the temptation, He will also provide a way of escape so that you are able to bear it. So, so HCSV, Mas mas malinaw na siya. Nasa na ba siya? If you will look at the, the, the diagram again. So, you have the King James Version at first. Yung pinaka formal. And then you have the New King James and ESV. Then the second column. And then the third is your HCSB. Now, let's look at NASB. New American Standard Bible. No temptation has overtaken you, but such as is common to man. And God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with the temptation will provide a way of escape also, so that you will be able to endure it. Nakita niyo yung differences ng mga translations? NRSV. New Revised Standard Version No testing has overtaken you That is not common to everyone God is faithful And He will not let you be tested beyond your strength Sa ibang Sa iba is beyond your ability Sa, ES, sa ESV beyond your ability, ability Sa New King James be, beyond what you are able the same with NASB, beyond what you are able. But in NRSV, it's beyond your strength. He will not let you be tested beyond your strength. But with the testing, He will also provide a way out so that you may be able to endure it. Sa pang Bible na ginagamit ko is New English Translation. No trial has overtaken you that is not faced by others. Kita niyo yun? That is not common to everyone. There is a new English translation that is not faced by others. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tried beyond what you are able to bear. Beyond your strength, NRSV, NET, beyond what you are able to bear. But with the trial, will also provide a way 
out so that you may be able to endure it. And now in NIV, maraming gumagamit din ito sa, sa atin, sa mga Pilipino lalo. NIV, ver, the New International Version. No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. Para malapit sila sa ng new, in, in, new English translation. But when you are tempted, He will also provide a way out so that you can endure. And then, nagkaroon ng update ang NIV, naging TNIV. No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to us all. Common to us all. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, He will also provide a way, a way out so that you can endure it. And then, let's go to NLT. New Living Translation. Marami din gumagamit sa atin ito. New Living Translation. The temptations in your life are no different from what others experience. See that? Yung iba, nagsimula sila, no temptation, no testing. No temptation. Marami, most nung binasa natin previously, no temptation. But look at the NLT. The temptations in your life are no different from what others experience. And God is faithful. He will not allow the temptation to be more than you can stand. When you are tempted, He will show you a way out so that you can endure. Let's look at the uh, Good News Bible. Every test that you have experienced is the kind that normally comes to people. Wow, it's so different now. But do you think it's the same thought? Pag-isipan nyo ayon? Same thought ba yon on the previous ones? But God keeps His promise. And He will not allow. God is faithful on others. But here in Good News Bible, it says, But God keeps His promise. And He will not allow you to be tested beyond your power to remain fear, firm. At the time you are put to the test, He will give you the strength to endure it and so provide you with a way out. That is Good News Bible. Let's go to the message. No test. The message says, No test or temptation that comes your way is beyond the course of what others have had to face. All you need to remember is that God will never let you down. He'll never let you be pushed past your limit. He'll always be there to help you come through it. Although, and the pa rin yung thought, pero ang layo na niya, no? Ang layo na nung, nung kanyang translation from from the for formal. This is already very functional, even beyond functional approach. Amplified or paraphrase. So we have uh, Amplified Bible. For no temptation, and then may, may, par may parenthesis, no trial regarded as enticing to sin. No matter how it comes or what it, where it leads, look at that. Has overtaken you and laid hold on you that is not common to man. And then another bracket. That is no temptation or trial has come to you that is beyond human resistance and that is not adjusted and adopted and belonging to human experience and such as man can bear. But God is faithful. And then there's already another bracket. Faithful to what? To His Word and to His compassionate nature. Binibigyan, binibigyan, nyo, binibigyan na kayo ng, ng interpretation dito. To His Word and to His compassionate nature. And He can be trusted. Wala, walang sinabi yan doon sa original text. 
pag tinignan niyo yung mga formal approach, walang ganito di, Walang ganong mga words, di ba? He, he can be trusted not to let you be tempted and tried and assayed beyond your ability and strength of resistance and power and to endure. But with the temptation, he will, he will and then always also provide the way out, the means of escape to a landing place that you may be capable and strong and powerful to bear up under it patiently. So nakita natin yung, yung different translations ng, ng 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 10 verse 13. No? And ano kaya masasabi natin from different translation? Nakita natin sabi nga yung movement from from formal King James Version, ESV, NKJV, and then sa, sa bandang gitna yung NIV, uh, NAT, and then magiging more functional na NLT, and then very functional na yung mga paraphrase Bible. Now, dito ako mag-i-end ngayon, choosing a translation. So, ito na yung pinakalas na pag-uusapan natin sa ating pag-aaral. So, there's a following guidelines uh, for choosing a translation. These are the following guidelines that we can uh, look at whenever we choose a translation. Pasta na ba maganda translation pag nag prepare ako ng preaching ko? So, ito na yun. Choose, choose a translation that uses modern English, number one. No? Choose a translation that uses modern English. The whole point of making a translation is to move the message of the original text to a language you can understand. That's the main point, the aim of translation, to a language that you can understand. History teaches us that languages change over time, and English is no except, exception. The English of John Wycliffe, or Wycliffe, or John Wycliffe's day, or of 1611, or even of late 1700s, is simply not the same as the English of the 21st century. Tama naman yun. Iba na English natin sa English nila. Tingnan nyo na lang yung King James Version na original. Pag binabasa nyo siya, ang dami mga words na hindi na natin ginagamit ngayon sa English. There is, lit there is little to be gained by translating a Greek or Hebrew text into a kind of English that you no longer use and can no longer comprehend. For that reason, we recommend that you choose among the many good translations that have appeared within the last 50 years. So ESV is a good translation, NET is a good translation, and IV is a good translation. Choose a translation number two. Choose a translation that is based on the standard Hebrew and Greek text. Again, choose a translation that is based on the standard Hebrew and Greek text. As we mentioned earlier in this chapter, the standard text for the Old Testament is the BHS or the Biblia Hebraica Stuttgartensia. Meron akong copy dito ng sa, 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 sa mga books ko. So that's the standard for BHS and the, um, in short it's just BHS. So seminary yun yung ginagamit namin noon na nag-aaral kami ng Hebrew language. So the BHS. So that's a standard text. And then for the New Testament, uh, we have the uh, UBS, Greek New Testament, GNT. So ang, ang point dito is that pumili tayo ng text ng, ng ng translation na mula doon sa 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 BHS sa mga standard na na text for Old and New Testament which is the BHS and the Greek New Testament. Uh, number 3. Give preference to a translation by a committee or committee. Give preference to a translation by a committee over against a translation by an individual. So choose a translation by a committee. So grupo ng mga nagka-translate. Why? Pag mas maraming minds ang nagka-translate, mas maraming opinions. So talagang na 
napipili na maigi yung mga translation ng words, phrases, yung thought napipili mabuti pag committee ang nagtranslate. What are the Bibles that are, that are uh, translated by committee? ESV, English Standard Version, and then uh, NET, and then we also have uh, NIV, New, Eng New International Version. Translating requires an enormous amount of knowledge and skill. So a group of qualified translators will certainly possess more expertise than any one translator possibly could. In addition, a group of scholars will usually guard against the tendency of individual scholars to read their own personal biases into their translation. Pag individual kasi ang nagtatranslate, hindi mo maiiwasan na may mga personal biases yung mga translators choose the translation number four choose the translation that is appropriate for your own particular purpose at the time when you want to read devotionally or read to children consider simplified functional transla translation like the New Living Translation. Pag nagbabasa ka, ka sa mga bata, pag nagde-devotion ka, kapatid, ang gamitin mo, New Living Translation or the New Century Version. If you are reading the, to, reading to the non-traditional or unchurched people, consider the Contemporary English Version, CEV, or the Message. So, pwede mong gamitin pag nag-evangelize ka ng mga uh, tao. Is the message or the contemporary English version. If you are reading to people with English as a second language, consider the Good News Bible. So, Filipinos are uh, uh, people with uh, English as second, langu second language natin. So, naayon sa atin yung Good News Bible. <clears throat> uh... But for serious Bible study, listen to this. But for serious Bible study, we suggest the New American Standard Bible, the New Revised Standard Version, the English Standard Version, ESV, the Holman Christian Standard Bible, the, the New English Translation, and the New International Version, depending on the audience and the situation so in conclusion to conclude this uh, study when it comes to studying the scripture few things are as important as how the bible has been translated we can be thankful that god has used translators to get the message of the original text into our hands can you imagine the christian life without your own copy of god's word ano kaya ngayon kung wala tayo nito Kopya ng Biblia. Can you imagine without a, a Christian life, without this, without a copy of God's Word? In the past, many Christians have lived under those circumstances. And even now, maraming mga, like sa China, no? yung kanilang version ng, ng Bible doon na ginagamit is watered down by the Communist Party. Hindi sila pwedeng gumamit ng mga ganitong version ng Bible kundi yung pinibigay ng Communist Party of China. So, there are many places in the world right now na hindi sila pwede makakuha nitong copy ng Bible. There is no such thing as a perfect translation. Right. No perfect translation. Furthermore, languages can o change over time. For these reasons, Committed scholars and linguists must continue to work hard to get the message of the original text into a language that people can understand. Who knows? God may call you to serve as a Bible translator. Why not, di ba? Tawagin kayo ng Panginoon na maging isang Bible translator. 
So, doon na magtatapos yung ating pag-aaral patungkol sa uh, Bible translation. So, this will be your assignment for next week. Ayan, nasa screen nyo ngayon ang assignment natin. Select five translation that we talked about in this chapter. Select the passage from the Bible. It must be at least two verses long. And write out how the translators or translations render this passage. Next, mark or highlight the differences among the five translations. Write a paragraph summarizing what you have observed by comparing the translation. Kanina lang, binigyan ko kayo ng example dun sa mga, sa mga translations natin, di ba? Dun, dun pa lang sa He will not let you be tempted, tested. Ibang, iba't ibang mga ano. Ay, i-highlight nyo lang kung ano yung mga nakita nyo na mga differences when it comes to translations. So, that's it. That will be our assignment for next week. So, maraming salamat muli sa inyong pakikinig. 45 minutes is done. And next week, ang ating pag-aaralan is the basics of the journey. So, for now, entering into the interpretive journey that will study the basics of the journey. So, uh, manalangin tayo sa gabi ito or sa araw na ito sa ating pagtatapos. Marami pong salamat o Diyos sa iyong kabutihan at sa iyong katapatan, Lord God. Pinigyan mo kami ng panahon na ito upang kami mag-aaral ng iyong banal na salita. Tuloy kami mga magkaroon ng kasigasigan, Lord, sa pag-aaral na ito. Enthusiasm to continue to study your word upang maging prepared kami every time we preach. We know what to do, O God. We know the right thing to do pag kami ay nangangaral at nagpo-proclaim ang iyong salita. Tulungan niyo po ang bawat isa sa amin, Panginoon. Salamat po, Diyos, sa panahon na ito. Sa pangalan ni Jesus, Amen. And Amen. Muli magandang gabi sa inyong lahat. Pagpalain po tayo ng ating Panginoon.